Hello and welcome to theCUBE's coverage of Supercomputing 24, SC24 as it's most commonly known. We are live from the floor in Atlanta today and have even more coverage coming from the Cube studios. SC24 is not just the premier supercomputing show for HPC or high performance computing, but also for AI infrastructure nowadays. And with that, let's dive into some of the discussion about how data center networks need to evolve to handle these new workloads. Right now, I'm joined by Scott Bills, VP of Professional Services at Dell Technologies. Hey, Scott, welcome on board. And you know, this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart, to put it mildly. And uh, I, I think, again, you know, it's when you think about it, data is the lifeblood of AI. Yeah, no, totally agree. And uh, you know, the, the key to driving outcomes um, and business value from Gen AI is data. And that's where the, uh, the role of AI networking uh, becomes so important and, and critical. Uh, when you think about you know, AI networking and the role it plays in data, uh, when, when you think about clusters and AI architectures, they're really fundamentally different than traditional uh, data center networking. Uh, when you think about clusters of, of GPUs, you essentially want the clusters at a rack level or even a, a data center level uh, to function as a, a single computer, a single brain. Yeah. So, no, what that oh, so what sorry. That yeah. I, I think again, that's getting into that, into the challenges, and mm -hmm. what are, what are some of the primary challenges organizations face with that latency, the network bottlenecks, and again not even that, but just the in-house expertise for the complicated technologies that are there. Well, it's really architecting uh, the network uh, to reduce latency, uh, improve uh, throughput. You really want your GPUs to be fed data uh, as, as quickly as possible. You want them to be fully utilized. And with uh, the architectures of, of AI networks being fundamentally different, meaning connect GPUs to GPUs and to drive them at scale, you really need a fundamentally different architecture, um, which is, is requiring a, a different set of skills that a lot of organizations don't have today, whether that be InfiniBand, RDMA, uh, a lot of customers are needing help in this area, and that's where Dell Services engage to help them um, overcome the challenges and the issues they're facing. I think that's key, and I, I think it's it's great that you guys have that expertise. Again, uh, I you know again I'm probably one of the few pe analysts who's actually uh, configured InfiniBand in his life, and I, I can tell you, uh, Ethernet's a lot easier. But still, I, I think mm -hmm. when you talk about RDMA and these new technologies, uh, you know, getting the most out of them can be a challenge. So, how can organizations really leverage low latency, high bandwidth network designs and technologies like InfiniBand and RDMA to build, you know, kind of scalable, future-ready AI networks. And how is Dell really helping with that? Yeah, we're we're helping by you know bringing our kind of capabilities, our, our new services, and and the the expertise of our partners uh, as well. Uh, for example, Nvidia uh, to help them design, implement, and and optimize uh, these networks at scale. Uh, what we find today is uh, a lot of the the cloud service providers, uh, GPU as a service providers. Um, are challenged with this. We're helping quite a number of them today uh, with these networking challenges. But as enterprise deployments uh, begin to scale out, uh, they're going to face and are facing similar uh, issues. Uh, so helping them think through uh, you know, the overall design architecture, not just for today, but going forward as they scale out the environment is a big part of the, the capability we bring. Uh, and then the, the expertise from NVIDIA and our, our other partners in the space as well. Yeah, because again, I, I think what I love about the Dell strategy around uh, you know, networking for AI is the fact that you're bringing together a number of different pieces uh, that you know, gives choice to that end customer. But one of the things that we talk about you know, a lot with AI is what business benefits can really be achieved and you know, what is the, ROI or improved efficiency or faster AI operations by really adopting these tailored 
expert driven AI networking solutions because what, what is the, the ROI is what everybody's looking for and you know they're they're saying oh my god they got to do build out a new network and things like that what what are some of the things that you see that help them well, on the business side well it's really time to, to, to value in feeding the GPUs the models with data and getting the most out of those GPUs from a capacity and a utilization standpoint that's really where we see the, the lot of the ROI is removing those performance bottlenecks, increasing the, the throughput and allowing to drive full utilization, uh, which is reflected in um, kind of model training, uh, model inferencing, uh, the outcomes that really matter to, to the business. So it's a critical enabler of, of ROI, uh, getting the most from your infrastructure and making sure you're driving uh, the most uh, from a use case enablement standpoint. Yeah, I think that to me is is the key is understanding the use case and making sure the right network for the right use case. But I, I think what what's nice is, and you kind of hit on this a little bit, but is that you know you're not doing it alone. Dell's not going mm -hmm. alone. Dell's you know expertise and partnerships with industry leaders like Nvidia and integration of technologies like RDMA and InfiniBand make it a leader in delivering these superior AI networking solutions. Really, how do you see all of this playing together as people try to look at, because they're not experts in supercomputing, they're not experts necessarily in HPC, some are, but mm -hmm. they're looking for the, the, the easy button. And I think, you know, again, you're bringing a lot of partners to the, to the table as well. We're bringing kind of partners to the table. We're also bringing a, a full scope approach to it. So it's not just about architecting the network, deploying the gear. It's also around kind of the, the data fabric as well and, and Sonic and implementing and optimizing that, uh, helping to, to monitor as well and bringing all that to bear, uh, you know, for our, our customers. And the skills piece is something, yes, we recognize absolutely there's a gap. That's where we bring, you know, obviously our skills to bear. Um, but also our learning and education services and training uh, that we do to help with um, upskill uh, our customers around the required technical skills, expertise, certifications required to operate and, and run these complex AI networks on an ongoing basis. Let's, let's, let's kind of double click on that a little bit because I, I think what's good is, like you said, the certifications and it's not just about always doing it for them. It's about bringing them, you know, getting them uh, upskilled in many cases because, you know, again, even Sonic, which is, uh, I believe, your stuff that's around the RDMA and how you do it over Ethernet, but it's, again, you know, not, they may not have these skills in InfiniBand as well. How, how are you really approaching that upskilling as well, and how do you engage with customers from that perspective? Yeah, I think it's part of our broader professional services philosophy and mandate towards working with customers. We certainly want to help them drive outcomes uh, as rapidly as possible, uh, address their issues. But you know, look, we, we don't want to be hanging around from a consulting standpoint. Uh, we want these customers to be able to you know, support and, and manage themselves. So a lot of the part of our uh, engagements is the skills transfer. Um, upskilling them, uh, making sure they're in a position to uh, to support and, and drive on an ongoing basis. So when you think about how we engage customers philosophically, not just networking, but overall, that's a big component of what we bring to bear is helping them um, upskill for kind of day one, two, uh, and plus uh, in terms of uh, management and, and ongoing kind of extension, um, expansion of, of the network. So, so when you when you look at it and you're engaging with customers, and they're thinking, "Hey, it's it," we're trying to really look at our architecture. Where, where's where do you help engage with them first on this on this journey? Because I, I think that's important. How do you get started? Because it can seem overwhelming to organizations. Yeah, a lot of uh, customers we work with, the starting point is just doing an, an initial assessment on the environment and, and overall readiness. So, you know, we talked about the fact that, you know, data center architectures, networking architectures are fundamentally different um, in the Gen AI world versus traditional data center. A lot of the ways we get started is to help do um, a, a quick assessment to understand not just from a, a networking standpoint, but also power cooling uh, data center overall. How ready are they? Uh, what are the key issues that they need to address from an architecture and design standpoint? And how do they think 
uh, you know, need to think about the, the priorities that they need to go address from a, a services and, and support standpoint, from a customer engage, or from an engagement standpoint. So the first step is really to go and do that quick assessment to understand, hey, how ready are you really uh, for AI infrastructure and, and networks in particular? Yeah, and I think that to me is really one of the big keys is understanding, is part of that a skills assessment of the organization and helping them understand kind of their gaps and, and where they play as well? Absolutely, so it's not just the, the technology, it's not just the overall uh, deployment um, kind of architecture and how networking fits in, but it's assessing kind of the skills and understanding where the, the customer wants to be longer term from a, a skills standpoint. You know, we mentioned that a lot of them need to upskill and and train, um, you know, their their teams around these skills. There are others that say, look, uh, we would prefer to have you, um, you know, go ahead and manage this uh, going forward. So the skills assessment is certainly a piece of that, and that uh, you know can lead in a couple of different directions, uh, depending depending on the customer strategy and how they're kind of thinking about ongoing day two uh, operations and management. Yeah, I think that's the key, and I think you hit on it, is not, not only how do you build the architecture, not only how you implement it, but you know, day one, day two. Talk, talk a little bit about how you get people ready for that day two and help them really, you know, from the architecture and transition to owning it. Yeah, well, look, that's really, uh, AI networking is, is a piece of it, but you know, another aspect of uh, AI architectures is that uh, networking, compute, and storage are more tightly and, and more integrally linked <laughs> than they have been in the past. Um, you may have seen kind of recent announcements that we've made around kind of rack uh, level integration of uh, those components, delivering kind of full racks to the, the customer. Um, they need to think about kind of operations in the, the context of a different um, infrastructure model, um, but then also different software stacks uh, on that as well. So, you know, again, AI networking is a component of thinking about that broader um, AI infrastructure and, and stack uh, that they need to consider, but it's taking that holistic uh, view and determining kind of what are the, the key issues, what's different uh, now versus, you know, what we've done with our traditional data center. Yeah, no, I, 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 I was uh, lucky enough to be in Austin and getting to walk through <laughs> one of your AI data centers and got to mm -hmm. not only, you know, I'm glad I had earplugs because it was loud when they, the GPUs turned on, but what was really cool from a networking perspective was really the, the rack design and the thought that went into the cabling aspects of it as well. And I think that goes into kind of your overall approach to that, you know, as you guys call it, the AI factory, as it mm -hmm. would be. And is yeah. that, does that help simplify a lot of organizations as they get to those day, day two operations? Yeah, because look, they're looking for, you know, the, the easy button, um, you know, for on-prem AI, bringing AI uh, to their data. Um, the AI factory, uh, the way we configure that and, and bring that to customers. We have different t-shirt sizes, different bundles we bring to customers to help them um, get started. Um, but it integrates a lot of the, the networking components in it already um, in terms of you know, the, the hardware uh, configuration, but then our, also our uh, assessment and design services uh, as well. So yeah, the whole AI factory construct makes it much easier for customers. It's based on this principle that we want to bring together an integrated package to our customers, including infrastructure, uh, ecosystem partners and our, our services and uh, make it easy to, to get up and running. Uh, and, and get you know their AI use cases underway. Yeah, I think everybody's looking for the easy button. So, <laughs> but hey, so let's kind of hit on the last word here. I, mm -hmm. I know you have some more places people can go to really you know dive in on on this topic in particular. Uh, you know, again, I, I love the fact that you know again you're always trying to help upskill and help people understand because I think there is a lot of education that's needed, especially on the networking side of this space. Yeah, certainly you'll see the announcements um, around our new AI networking services here. Would also point everyone to a uh, blog. Uh, we'll be posting, kind of talking through these new services capabilities in more detail uh, by Matt Leibowitz, uh, who is driving kind of AR, our AI networking services uh, on our consulting uh, portfolio team. Um, great piece that gets into more detail around kind of the what, where, and, and how, and I uh, would encourage everyone to, to go and take a look. 
That's great. And I, I think, you know, again, we'll put that down in the, in the, in the description section as well, a link to that, to that blog. Uh, well, thanks for coming on, Scott. I, I know we'll, you know, talk about more stuff over the time here. And, uh, you know, and, and SC is just so exciting. So thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Enjoyed the conversation. And thank you for watching this segment live from the floor of SC24 and the Cube Studios, where I am. And stay tuned for more SC24 on the Cube, the leader in tech news and analysis.